talking with Sarah Henderson, environmental epidemiologist with the BC Centre for Disease Control. We're talking about climate change. So can we expect more cases of asthma due to climate change? This is kind of a challenging question. Um, if you see what we have on the screen here, you have uh, how asthma prevalence has been changing in lots of countries over the course of time and it doesn't matter what those countries are what really matters is that the trend is upwards in almost all cases and then on the right we have how CO2 in the atmosphere is changing over the course of time and these are on the same time scales um, and that fact that asthma is going up and that CO2 has been going up has led people to hypothesize that asthma might actually be an early indicator of climate change, but that's a very difficult hypothesis to actually research and prove. So all we can say right now is the two are coincident, asthma is going up at the same time that CO2 is going up in the atmosphere, but we, we definitely can't say that the CO2 increase is, is responsible for the increase in asthma. So the, the answer is maybe. So if the climate is going to be warmer, how would that affect people with asthma? Now that's a different question. Um, so probably the primary effect that we're talking about here is pollen. Uh, first of all, if the climate's getting warmer, the pollen season is getting longer. And what we have here is a plot of pollen season, or the, in the length of pollen season, the number of frost-free days in a year and the latitude of the location of the city. And you can see uh, down in Georgetown, Texas, not, not much has really changed between 1995 and 2009. But when we get up to uh, the nor northern regions like Fargo and North Dakota, Winnipeg and Saskatoon in Canada, uh, we can see that the pollen seasons actually increased by almost 25 days over this period. So people who have asthma are being exposed to something that triggers their asthma for longer periods every year. The next part of this is that a warmer climate and more CO2, so more carbon dioxide, uh, makes more pollen and it makes more allergenic pollen. Um, so this slide shows a really interesting study where they went out and planted ragweed in four different environments uh, in a rural environment which had lower temperatures and lower CO2, a park environment with sort of moderate temperatures and moderate CO2, a suburban environment with the same, and an urban environment with higher temperatures and higher CO2. And what you can see is that the length of the catkins on the ragweed, and that's the, the part that contains the pollen, got longer and longer as we go along. So on the top left of the ragweed there, you can see a short catkin, and on the bottom right, you can see a really long catkin. So that, that intersection of warmer temperatures and more CO2 in the environment grows more pollen and that pollen is more allergenic. I see and are there other impacts that climate change might have on people living with asthma? Yeah so there's there's a lot to guess about here but there's some things that we know for sure. One thing is thunderstorms. Thunderstorm asthma has been uh, well described and the hypothesis is that as a storm is moving along, the electrical charge associated with the storm actually sucks up pollens and molds in the atmosphere. Um, they get wet in the storm, they break apart into smaller pieces, and then they get sent back down into the breathable layer. So you get much smaller pollens and molds, and they make their way even deeper into the lungs than these things would normally do. Um, so on the top right there, we have uh, what's probably the most responsible mold, which is alternaria. Another interesting thing about alternaria is that it likes really humid environments, so if the environment is becoming more humid, we expect more of it, and many asthmatics are very sensitive to it. It also loves air conditioner drain pans, so as people get hotter and they stall, install more air conditioning, we expect to see more alternaria associated with that. 
Thunderstorms are on the increase. They happen um, increasingly in hot, humid weather. Thunderstorms also initiate forest fires, which we're well aware of here in British Columbia. And we know that exposure to forest fire smoke can be very problematic for asthmatics. And finally, um, smoggy days. Although, in general, air pollution concentrations are going down because of different controls that we have in place. Um, the combination of nitrogen dioxides and aromatic hydrocarbons, when you put them together with sunshine and temperature high heat, that makes ozone. And we know that ozone is particularly problematic for, for asthmatics. So even though air pollution is going down, we should expect more high ozone days in hotter conditions. So it sounds as if, although climate change seems to be a global problem, the effects of climate change are going to be very individual, particularly for people who have pre-existing lung condition. That's correct. So, you know, people need to know their sensitivities and they need to understand how their sensitivities might change over the coming years under these climate change scenarios. Thank you, Sarah, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs>